name is Brandon McGinley. I'm the uh, president of the Gun Society. Um, I'm going to first uh, introduce uh, our panel today and introduce our moderator. Before I begin, though, uh, I just want to draw your attention to the little handouts that are around the room. A little green handout, please take home and see information about us, how to get in touch with the Gun Society. Um, we'd love to hear from you, hear what you think about the event, maybe get involved if you aren't already. And other than that, there's also a little, um, I call it a questionnaire, but it has really one question. Um, and if you give me a could just take the, a really short moment just to mark how you found out about today's event. You can just leave it here, we'll collect it, and uh, it would help us you know, to know how to publicize these things in the future. Thank you. Um, so I'll just introduce our panelists, and I'll turn it over to Shivani, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Um, so we have Dr. Rosanna James. Um, she received her PhD from uh, the Politics Department at Princeton University in 1996. Uh, her first son was born, followed by a daughter and another son. Since then, she has worked as a part-time lecturer in public and international affairs in the Woodrow Wilson School and in the politics department. Her research de deals with uh, the political aspects of economic relations in Eastern Europe and Russia. She teaches in the area of international relations and comparative politics. Uh, next, we have Lori Bench. Um, Lori has an undergraduate degree in politics from Princeton and a master of law degree in LLM from Central uh, European University in Budapest. She lived in Hungary for 12 years, where she helped her husband Tim start an, out, an arts foundation and plant a church, as well as working as a part-time editor and research assistant. Since 2007, she has been ministry a ministry fellow with the Christian Union, working on campus with undergrad students involved in Princeton Faith in Action. Faith in Action. Uh, Lori and Tim have three daughters and live in Princeton. Um, in the middle, we have uh, Kim Daniels, who graduated from Princeton in 1990 with a degree from the Woodrow Wilson School, uh, and she was a Rhodes Scholar finalist. After college, she taught high school for a year and then attended the uh, University of Chicago Law School, graduating in 1994. From 94 to 2000, she practiced law with the San Francisco Commercial Litigation Firm, first full-time and then part-time from home. Since 2000, she has been a trial counsel, also part-time from home, uh, with a Catholic public interest law firm, the Thomas More Law Center, uh, and, also, and has also done some freelance writing. Kim met her husband, David, at Princeton, and they have six kids ranging in age from 14 down all the way down to two, and they live in Bethesda, Maryland. Um, next, we have Anna Samuel, uh, graduated in 2000 with a degree, a degree in politics. She is currently a research scholar at the Wizard Institute here in Princeton and a PhD candidate in political philosophy at the University of Notre Dame. Mrs. Samuel Samuel uh, has lectured for civil liberties and European politics courses here at Princeton and has directed seminars on enlightened natural law theory uh, for the Wizard Institute. She and her husband have three children, ages four, two, and two months. And finally, we have Suzanne Patrick, uh, with a classic major at Princeton, and used, uh, used to say she never met a dead language she didn't like. <laughs> I, I can't claim to have the same affinity. <laughs> uh, she also played on the women's water polo team and volunteered with the Student Volunteers Council. She was a, she was a member of Tower Club, uh, where she was activities and service chair. After graduating from Princeton, she attended law school at the University of Virginia and then served as a law clerk for the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Delaware. She practiced securities law for several years at the International Law Firm of Fulbright and Jaworski before moving to the Securities and Exchange Commission, where she worked in the Division of Enforcement conducting investigations and then served as an advisor to the Chairman of the Commission. She was also involved in reopening the financial markets after the terrorist attacks of 9-11 and also advised the Chairman Chairman um, of the commission, the chairman, as the commission adopted dozens of rules in response to the corporate and economic crises that, um, that led to the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. Since having children, she has worked both full-time and part-time as a speechwriter. She currently is on sabbatical from her law career while she raises three children in Bethesda, Maryland. She's a freelance writer with emphasis on the free. In her spare time, she plays the piano and enjoys cooking, reading, and reading about cooking. So, uh, and our moderator today will be Shwani Radhakrishnan. She's a, the Vice President of the Enzyme Society and Software here at Princeton. And so I'm going to turn it over to her and I'm going to get out of everybody's way. And if you're lucky, you won't see me again until this is very, very close to being over. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're really excited to have these wonderful female panelists with us today. Um, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the format of the presentation. Each of the, the panelists is going to have about seven to ten minutes to talk. Um, and then we're going to, I'll have some of my own questions that I'm going to ask. I'm very excited about this. And then we'll open this up for you. Um, and you can ask questions. And we'll probably run until about six o'clock. Great. Thank you. Uh, I'm delighted to be here today and 
to think together and engage in debate and hear what you think about balancing uh, work involved in raising family and professional work. I'm really impressed with the student involvement in organizing this panel and moderating it. And it makes me inclined uh, that to think that the students involved in bringing this, this um, meeting here uh, tonight will do very well balancing work and family. Because to me, it is essentially the matter of a sense of responsibility, the sense of heart, and not, and I know it goes against the grain of being an academic, it's not a matter of intellectual debate, um, judgment, distilling the one and the right strategy for striking the right balance and, and then following it. When I think about cases of intellectual efforts to find the right um, strategy for balancing work and, and family, I see efforts that ended up disastrously. Perhaps because my area of study is Eastern Europe and, and the Soviet Union and Russia, and perhaps because I grew up in communist Poland. When you look at the rise of uh, communist Russia, it corresponded with the rise of the availability of methods of contraception due to medical progress. And revolutionary Russia grasped onto these uh, methods of contraception as a, as, a, as a part of their ideology of modernity, of progress, and the, the plan they presented as the best solution was what well, involved limiting the number of children. And then, if there were children, one or two, putting them in daycare, kindergarten, and having the mother's immunity go back to work. And it was not an option. It was the only way to go. In 1920, abortion was legalized in the Soviet Union. The doctors could perform abortion. And the rates soared so much. For example, if you look at the data from Leningrad, between 1924 and 1928, the rates went so high up, up to over 30 abortions and 1,000 of inhabitants of Leningrad. Mm -hmm. And the Soviet government found it had to reverse the policy because it was alarmed about the demographic consequences. It still was used as the widespread method of um, contrast with the family. Um, planning, uh, but it also um, came in other places in the communist world. Abortion came in reaction to government policies that were actually trying to force people to have more children um, in order to boost the, uh, the power of the state. I'm thinking about Romania. Uh, where the Communist Party uh, did not try to encourage people to have more children. Again, it was a reversal after this idea of progress to limiting the number of, of children. They did not 